our moon. Brilliant, tranquil, and throughout time, it has been a complete mystery to us. For centuries, stories have been told and sonnets have been written about the moon. In fact, our lives revolve around the moon. With every seasonal change, the moon is ever present. The moon lights our way in the darkest night and gently guides the weather across our world. Without the moon, the earth would be silent. We are told the moon has been here since well before the dawn of man. Our moon is either a part of the earth or was a vagabond captured by our world eons ago. But is this true? Much controversy exists around the origin and makeup of the moon today, and one of the largest arguments surrounding the satellite is the solidity of its center and the process by which we got our moon in the first place. There are many common theories for the existence of the moon, and all have been proven wrong. The most common is the giant impact theory. The idea that another stellar body collided with the Earth and created the moon. However, the isotopic signature of the Earth and Moon are identical. This negates the idea that another planetary body from somewhere else crashed into the Earth and formed the Moon. Accretion is another hypothesis that states that the Earth and the Moon formed together as a double system from the primordial accretion disk of the solar system. The problem with this hypothesis is that it does not explain the angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system or why the Moon has a relatively small or no iron core compared to the Earth's and why the Moon does not revolve. The notion that the moon was captured by the Earth is another popular theory. Isaac Asimov has stated, it's too big to have been captured by the Earth. The chances of such a capture having been affected and the moon then having taken up a nearly perfect circular orbit around our Earth 
are too small to make such an eventuality credible. Then there is the fission hypothesis. This theory states that during a time when the Earth was forming and was still molten, the spinning of the planet projected out material which became our moon today. The Pacific Ocean was supposedly the area where the moon came from. However, this was debunked considering the immaturity of the ocean floor crust and knowing that the moon formed at a time much further in the past. Then there is the problem with the moon itself. There are a number of strange facts about the moon which conjure up many questions about its existence. The first of which is the moon's age. The moon is far older than previously expected, maybe even older than the earth or the sun. The oldest age for the earth is estimated to be 4.6 billion years old. Moon rocks were dated at 5.3 billion years old and the dust upon which they were resting was at least another billion years older. <sighs> Some argue that the moon may seem older only because its surface never renews itself, whereas the earth may have rocks that old, but have since been recycled through the natural resurfacing of the planet. There simply is no way to know this for sure. The chemical composition of the dust upon which the moon rocks sat differ remarkably from the rocks themselves. The rocks had to have come from somewhere else. One could surmise that younger and older meteors and asteroids crashing on the surface of the moon would account for the age differences. However, if this were the case, then we should have a multitude of different ages in all the rocks studied. This is not the case. Normal planetary composition results in heavier elements in the core and lighter materials at the surface. Not so on the moon. Don Wilson writes in his book, Our Mysterious Spaceship Moon. The abundance of refractory elements like titanium in the surface areas is so pronounced that several geologists proposed the refractory compounds were brought to the moon's surface in great quantity in some unknown way. They don't know how, but that it was done cannot be questioned. Mysterious water vapor has been detected on the moon as well. On March 7, 1971, lunar instruments placed by the astronauts recorded a vapor cloud of water passing across the surface of the moon. The cloud lasted 14 hours and covered an area of about 100 square miles. Moon rocks were magnetized. This is odd because there is no magnetic field on the moon itself. And then there is the seismic activity. Hundreds of moon quakes are recorded each year that cannot be attributed to meteor strikes. In November 1958, Soviet astronomer Nikolay A. Kozarev of the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory photographed a gaseous eruption of the moon near the crater Alphonsus. He also detected a reddish glow that lasted for about an hour.
1963, astronomers at the Lowell Observatory also saw reddish glows on the crest of ridges in the Arcurius region. These observations have proved to be precisely identical and periodical, repeating themselves as the moon moves closer to the Earth. Could these be natural phenomena? According to science, the moon has no geologic activity. All of this brings us to the most unusual truth about the moon. Our moon is not a solid object. It is indeed hollow. The moon's mean density is 3.34 times an equal volume of water, whereas the Earth's is 5.5. What does this mean? It means for these equations to be correct, the moon must be hollow, as it contains less density for its size and mass. In 1962, NASA scientist Dr. Gordon McDonald stated, if the astronomical data are reduced, it is found that the data require that the interior of the moon is more like a hollow than a homogeneous sphere. Nobel chemist Dr. Harold Urey suggested the moon's reduced density is because of large areas inside the moon where there is simply a cavity. Another way of saying it is hollow. And MIT's Dr. Sean C. Solomon wrote, the lunar orbiter experiments vastly improved our knowledge of the moon's gravitational field, indicating the frightening possibility that the moon might be hollow. None other than Carl Sagan in his treatise Intelligent Life in the Universe stated a natural satellite cannot be a hollow object. Therefore, the moon may not be a natural satellite at all. But do we know for a fact the moon is indeed hollow? Yes, we do. On November 20th, 1969, the Apollo 12 crew jettisoned the lunar module ascent stage, causing it to crash into the moon. The lunar module's impact, about 40 miles from the Apollo 12 landing site, created an artificial moon quake with startling characteristics. The moon reverberated like a bell for more than an hour. This test was repeated with Apollo 13, intentionally commanding their third stage rocket to impact the moon with even more startling results. <sighs> Seismic instruments recorded that the reverberations lasted for three hours and 20 minutes and traveled to a depth of 25 miles within the moon, leading to the conclusion that the moon has an unusually light or no core at all. To put this into perspective, when the Earth experiences a large earthquake, the reverberations from the quake usually only last minutes due to the density of the planet. The moon gongs like a hollow object for several hours.
Despite being a dead hunk of rock with very little geological activity, the moon is prone to shaking fits. These earthquake-like tremors are called moonquakes, and there are four different kinds of them. The first three types, deep quakes, vibrations from meteor impacts, and thermal quakes caused by the sun's heat, are relatively harmless. The fourth one, however, can be quite unpleasant. These shallow moon quakes can register up to 5.5 on the Richter scale, enough to move large furniture around and last for a remarkably long 10 minutes. According to NASA, these quakes also have the effect of making the moon ring like a bell. The frightening thing about moonquakes is that we have no real idea of what causes them. Earth's earthquakes are usually caused by the movement of tectonic plates, but the moon doesn't have any active plate tectonics. Some researchers think they may have some link to Earth's tidal activity, which is caused by the moon's pull. However, this theory is inconclusive as the tidal forces affect the entirety of the moon, but moon quakes are usually localized. But the mysteries do not end there. Our moon has been placed precisely in the orbit it travels. There is no way it could obtain its orbit randomly. <sighs> Our moon is the only moon in the solar system that has a stationary, near-perfect, circular orbit. Stranger still, the moon's center of mass is about 6,000 feet closer to the Earth than its geometric center which should cause wobbling. But the moon's bulge is on the far side of the moon, away from the Earth. It seems that something must have put the moon in orbit with its precise altitude, course, and speed. The odds of any of these factors randomly happening is zero. How does one explain the coincidence that the moon is just the right distance coupled with just the right diameter to completely cover the sun during an eclipse? Again, Isaac Asimov explains, there is no astronomical reason why the moon and the sun should fit so well. It is the sheerest of coincidences and only the earth among all the planets is blessed in this fashion. Most people think the moon is just a moon, but there is some talk that it should actually be classified as a planet. For one, it's far too big to be a true moon. Being about one-fourth of the diameter of Earth, it's easily the biggest moon in relation to its planet in our solar system. Because of its large size, the moon doesn't actually orbit Earth at all. Instead, Earth and Moon orbit each other, around a point between them. This point is called a barycenter, and the illusion the Moon is actually orbiting Earth comes from the fact that the barycenter is currently located inside the Earth's crust. The fact that the barycenter remains inside the Earth is pretty much the only reason Earth and Moon aren't classified as a twin planet, instead of a planet and its satellite. However, this may change in the future. Mm. 
Once you consider all the science we know about the moon, you're left with one inescapable conclusion. The moon is not, nor ever has been, Earth's natural satellite. The ancient calendar of Tiyanaka in Bolivia tells of a time when our moon wasn't there. Theories about the moon actually date back thousands of years as various cultures and civilizations discuss the story of how it came to be where it resides today. Greek authors Aristotle, Plutarch, as well as Roman authors Apollonius, Rhodius, and Ovid all wrote of a group of people called the Proselenes, who lived in the central mountainous area of Greece called Arcadia. The Proselenes claimed title to this area because their forebears were there before there was a moon in the heavens. Now this claim is substantiated by symbols on the wall of the courtyard of Calasasia, near the city of Tianakaya, Bolivia whose symbols record that the moon came into orbit around the earth between 11,500 and 13,000 years ago, long before recorded history. African Zulu legends say the moon is hollow and the home of the python or chicharia a reptilian race of intelligent extraterrestrials. The legend states the moon was brought here hundreds of generations ago by two brothers, Weiwen and Panku, who were the leaders of these reptilian extraterrestrials. These two reptiles were known as the Water Brothers, and they both had scaly skin like a fish. The Zulu tell is very similar to the Mesopotamia and Sumerian accounts about the two chief leaders who were also brothers, Enlil and Enoch, lords of the earth. The Zulu legend tells of how Wawain and Penku stole the moon in the form of an egg from the giant fire dragon and emptied out the yolk until it was hollow. Then they rolled the moon across the sky to the earth which brought about cataclysmic events on the planet that ended the golden age of the past. This legend fits well into the theory of the reptilian-human hybrids which are thought to run our world today. Credo Mutwa, a Sulu shaman, claims that the earth was very different then than it is now before the moon had arrived. There weren't any seasons, and the planet was perpetually engulfed by a canopy of water vapor. People did not feel the strong glare of the sun that we do now, and they could only see it through a watery mist. The earth was once a beautiful place, a lovely place, lush and green, with giant redwoods, violets and ferns, with a gentle drizzle and mist, the water canopy fell to the earth as a cataclysm of rain when the moon was put into place in the earth's orbit. This could explain the Noah story in the Bible when it rains for 40 days and 40 nights. The arrival of the moon, along with the reptilians, changed everything on earth. The moon modified the Earth's rotation and angle. The Earth turned on its axis as we were upside down, as the legend says, and brought more powerful tidal systems that once had been much calmer. The Zulu also claimed that women did not menstruate before the moon arrived. 
How could the Zulu, an ancient African tribe, know of the complex gravitational effects the moon has and would have on the Earth? Much of our current knowledge of the moon was discovered in the last century. Zulus and other native African accounts say the moon was built far, far away to keep an eye on people and as a vehicle to travel the universe. The Zulus say that the reptilians' giant mothership is the moon, and that's where they escaped to during the cataclysms of the Great Flood, which they themselves had caused by manipulating the orbit of the moon and creating other cosmic events. Outrageous as the spacecraft moon theory might first appear, consider how this model reconciles all the mysteries of the moon. First, it explains why the moon gives evidence of being older than the Earth, and perhaps even our solar system, and why there are three distinct layers within the moon's crust, with the densest material on the outside layer as one would expect if it's the hull of a spacecraft. Second, it could also explain why little to no water has been found on the moon's surface, yet there is evidence it exists deep inside. This theory could also explain the strange Maria and Maskins, perhaps the remnants of the machinery used to hollow out the moon, the idea of an artificial satellite could explain the odd rhythmic moonquakes as artificial constructs give way or collapse, reacting the same way during periods of stress from the Earth's pull. And artificial equipment beneath the moon's surface could be the source of the gas clouds that have been observed. If we know the moon is not natural, or at least is a natural satellite that was hollowed to become a spaceship, are there any indications on the surface of the moon that would support this? The answer to this question may startle you. There are a plethora of strange sightings and phenomena on the surface of the moon, many of which you can see with a decent telescope or even the naked eye. Aristocris, Plato, Aristotheles, Bila, Rabbi Levi, and Poseidonus all reported anomalous lights on the moon. Even NASA, one year before the first lunar landing, reported 570 plus lights and flashes were observed on the moon from 1540 to 1967. As recent as 2014, sightings of lights seen on the moon continue to be reported. Seeing lights on the moon is actually quite common. However, the anomalies don't stop there. A multitude of photographs taken by astronomers as well as NASA show several strange mechanical type devices on the surface of the moon. The shard, an obelisk shaped object that towers one and a half miles from the Eukert area of the moon's surface was discovered by Orbiter 3 in 1968. Dr. Bruce Cornett, who studied the amazing photographs, stated no known natural process can explain such a structure.
the tower. One of the most curious features ever photographed on the lunar surface is an amazing spire that rises more than five miles from the Cenus Media region of the lunar surface. And there's more. Unusual structures have been discovered across the moon's surface, scattered like the remnants of some long past civilization. Even we have left our own litter on the moon. Other strange lunar phenomena include the observation by Dr. Frank Harris of a black body on the surface 250 miles long and 50 miles wide, clouds and lightning, strange moving shadows and objects, and spire-like structures thousands of feet high. A huge boulder with tracks behind it from inside a crater to the rim running uphill. The shrinking over a period of time of the crater Luna from six miles in diameter to one and a half miles. Hill effects in craters appearing and disappearing in a few hours. Over 800 substantial observations have been made by scientists of blinking and flashing light. The results of NASA photographs of the lunar surface indicating several large pyramid structures, strange rifts in the surface with entrances, massive girders, machinery, and some 1,000 kilometer blocks of metal alongside tears in the surface. Scientific experts, including NASA investigators, believe that the moon is hollow. It is the only explanation. The velocity of sound has been found to increase with depth and at 40 miles it is too fast for the speed of propagation through rock substance. NASA is a government agency, and all government agencies are known to have a history of concealing information from the general public. Questioning NASA's story isn't ludicrous. Many speculate that NASA discovered unsettling information when they finally visited the moon decades ago information that would have caused them a lot of problems if leaked to the public. Therefore, we have never returned any human missions to the moon since. Any suggestion of the moon not being what we've been told it is usually follows with accusations of conspiracy theory and pseudoscience, although there may be many theories that aim to debunk all the aspects of this information, there are too many factors that still don't add up. How is it that seemingly unconnected ancient cultures have their own version of the artificial moon myth? Why are there unexplained geometric structures on the surface of the moon, which correlate to the structures found in ancient Egypt and other primitive locations on Earth? How is it that by miraculous chance, the moon perfectly eclipses our sun? The mathematical random probability that the sun and moon would perfectly align for a total eclipse to appear on Earth is zero, and yet the moon has perfectly timed phases and does eclipse often. The distance of the sun to the moon and the moon to the earth, which allows for the synchronized and complete coverage of the disk of the sun is impossible unless the moon were placed precisely where it is. Only an intelligence could do that. Uh -oh. 
Between 1969 and 1972, Apollo astronauts placed seismometers at their landing sites around the moon. The Apollo 12, 14, 15, and 16 instruments faithfully radioed data back to Earth until they were switched off in 1977. Between 1972 and 1977, the Apollo Seismic Network saw 28 moonquakes. A few registered up to 5.5 on the Richter scale. A magnitude 5 quake on Earth is energetic enough to move heavy furniture and crack plaster. Furthermore, shallow moonquakes lasted a remarkably long time. Once they reached residence, all continued for more than 10 minutes. Neil Armstrong was quoted as saying, the moon was ringing like a bell. What causes the shallow moonquakes and where do they occur? No one knows for sure. The Apollo seismometers were all in one relatively small region on the front side of the moon. So NASA was unable to pinpoint the exact locations of the quakes. It has been established beyond all reasonable doubt that the moon is not what it appears to be. Two Soviet scientists, Mikhail Vasin and Alexander Shubrakov, have spent much of their careers examining the facts compiled on lunar phenomenon. Their conclusion is that the moon is artificial, possibly a hollowed out planetoid, and that it was steered from some distant region of the galaxy into a circular orbit around our planet. And hence the extraordinary mystery of the rock and moon dust age variations. They claim that intellectual life has existed in the moon for eons. Spaceship Moon is the brainchild of two Soviet researchers, but many others agree with the theory, including NASA scientists at JPL and an Oxford University physicist. The capture theory has now returned, but with a significant adjustment, and that is that the Moon was steered into orbit by some intelligence. During one of the Apollo moon landings, several television viewers wrote to NASA explaining that they spotted one of the astronauts pick up what appeared to be a glass bottle and remark, my God, I don't believe it, look at this. Then the television screen went blank. If true, this suggests a government cover up. Other viewers observed the extreme difficulty astronauts had when drilling down a few inches into the moon's surface, and that when the drill bit was pulled out, metal shavings were visible. Rocks were found to contain brass, mica, titanium, and elements uranium-236 and neptunium-237, not previously found in nature. Astronomers have reported the sighting of a 12-mile-long bridge-like structure over the Sea of Crisis. This report was published in 1954 by John O'Neill, and in the 1950s, astronomer Morris K. Jessup claimed that UFOs had bases on the moon, and so does the government. Why was the moon directed to retain continuously a dark side? a side of the moon we never see. The two sides of the moon have evolved differently since their formation. 
with the far side forming at cooler temperatures and remaining stiffer while the earth side has been modified at high temperatures and for longer. Why the difference? Perhaps one side was exposed to more forward pressure during flight? The moon is tidally locked to Earth, meaning only one hemisphere faces us. We know that side well, with its dark regions called maria or seas of cooled magma. Oddly, however, these maria are virtually absent from the back side of the moon, as has been revealed to us by probes and even seen in person by Apollo 8 astronauts. The proverbial dark side of the moon also is much more pockmarked by craters. The starkly different hemispheres have been partly explained by the far side having a crust roughly nine miles thicker than that of the near side. Astronauts found it extremely difficult to drill into the surface of these dark plain-like areas. Soil samples were loaded with rare metals and elements. This dumbfounded scientists because these elements require tremendous heat approximately 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit to melt and fuse with the surrounding rock. Samples brought back to Earth by both Soviet and American space probes contain pure iron particles. The Soviets announced that pure iron particles brought back by remote-controlled lunar probe Zond-20 have not oxidized even after several years on Earth. Pure iron particles that do not rust are unheard of in the scientific world. Although there is a solid iron pillar of unknown age in New Delhi, India that has never rusted and no one knows why. One of the moon's most surprising dangers is lunar dust. As everyone knows, sand gets into everywhere, even on Earth. But on the moon, it's very hazardous. Lunar dust is as fine as flour, yet extremely rough. Thanks to this texture in the moon's low gravity, it clings absolutely everywhere. NASA has experienced numerous problems caused by moon dust. It has eroded astronauts' boots almost completely through and sandpapered their visors. It has traveled inside the ships with the spacesuits and caused moon hay fever in the poor astronauts that have inhaled it. It's thought that prolonged exposure to the stuff could even cause airlocks to fail and spacesuits to break down. And in case you were wondering, yes, of course, this devilish substance smells like gunpowder. Lunar explorations have revealed that much of the moon's surface is covered with a glassy glaze, which indicates that the moon's surface has been scorched by an unknown source of intense heat. As one scientist put it, the moon is paved with glass. The expert analysis shows that this did not result from massive meteor impacts. Could the presence of a glassy surface indicate the moon traveled at such high speeds, not unlike a spacecraft near light speed, that the surface friction resulted in the moon's high level of radiation and glass-like surface? The upper eight miles of the moon's crust are surprisingly radioactive. When Apollo 15 astronauts used their thermal equipment 
they got unusually high readings, which indicated that the heat flow near the Apennine Mountains was extremely hot. In fact, one lunar expert confessed, when we saw that, we said, my God, this place is about to melt. The core must be very hot. But that is the puzzle. The core is not hot at all, but cold, which only fits if the moon is hollow. The amount of radioactive material on the surface is not only embarrassingly high, but difficult to account for. Where did all this hot radioactive material come from? And if it came from the interior of the moon, how did it get to the surface? Is it possible that extraterrestrials are still living on or within the moon. Since the Apollo 11 moon mission, rumors have floated around NASA of an incident that was censored by the government. The incident involved NASA astronaut Neil Armstrong reporting to have seen UFO spacecraft on the leading edge of a crater on the moon. There is a documented but unconfirmed report that when Buzz Aldrin opened the door after landing on the moon, he immediately saw a transparent ethereal being staring at him from outside. Allegedly, the NASA Houston flight director has said that there was a public and secret private ASA radio frequency between the moon lander and mission control, and that a conversation took place during a mysterious two-minute interruption in public transmissions. To prove it is true, hundreds of independent civilian radio operators with powerful VHF equipment separately reported hearing the AMA spaceship report from the Apollo moonwalkers. Soviet radio operators also picked up and published it in Moscow. Another mysterious radio message from the moon was broadcast on French public television only one time before it was censored after it leaked out. That transmission appeared to be a mysterious, clearly spoken alien language. The famous French historian and author Robert Chirot published the transmission, which has been suppressed in the United States. It came from U.S. astronaut Warden, who transmitted it to NASA, and expert linguists have been unable to translate the message. Then, there are the images. For decades, observers on Earth and probes sent to the moon, as well as the astronauts themselves, have produced photographs that appear to show very strange anomalies on the moon. Images of structures on the moon have cropped up since the invention of space photography. What are these structures? Who built them? Are they leftover artifacts from some ancient culture? Are currently operating facilities still active on the moon today? Many of these structures emit lights or appear to move. Some are impossibly large, while others leave tracks across the moon's surface. And why is it that no one in an official capacity will admit the obvious when asked about these anomalies?
our moon remains one of the closest yet most mysterious objects in the night sky. Even though we have been there five times, we still know very little about it, and much of its strange oddities are kept secret for reasons unknown. Probes sent to the moon in the last decade have revealed the presence of water on the moon, but no one knows where it came from. Recently, the Chinese launched and landed a probe on the moon. Perhaps they will reveal what the United States will not. As outrageous as the moon spaceship theory is, all of the mysteries of the moon are resolved if one accepts that the moon is a gigantic extraterrestrial craft brought here eons ago by intelligent beings. This is the only theory that is supported by all of the data, and there is no data that contradicts this theory. The moon is a hollow sphere that apparently has traveled throughout the galaxy and resides now in a perfect orbit around Earth. Who brought it here? One popular theory is that a race called the Anunnaki came to Earth centuries ago and created the human race. According to the theory, the Sumerians are descendants of that race. Others believe the moon may have brought mankind itself, who populated one or both of the islands of Lemur and Atlantis. After both islands sank, these people were scattered around the earth and now make up the different races we are now. Let's consider a fictional hypothesis that may explain all the anomalies about the moon. Eons ago, a spacefaring race of humans hollowed out a moon in their solar system and converted it into a spaceship. The hollowed out areas would contain provisions and housing for thousands of humans, plus equipment to begin a colony. This moon was blasted out of orbit and traveled perhaps as a generation ship until it arrived at our inviting blue earth. We can only speculate why they came, but they arrived and parked their moon in a perfect orbit around the earth. Perhaps they wanted to terraform the earth and place the moon in such a precise orbit as to create weather patterns much like their own world. Once here, they began to set up their civilization, perhaps on Lemur or Atlantis or both using the technology they brought with them and what they could salvage from the moon they built a new colony here on earth
When the island of Lemur or Atlantis sank, they lost all their technology and scattered around the planet, becoming the races we know now. The red race would populate North America. The white race went north to become the Vikings. The black race escaped to Africa and the oriental race ended up in Asia. For the brief time they were here and had access to their moon-brought technology, they may have built monuments that survive to this day. During the time their colony prospered, they may have had the ability to return to the moon and leave technology on the surface or even within the moon. Systems may have been abandoned that still operate to this day. Perhaps a great flood engulfed their colony and erased much of what they brought with them. Or the sinking of the landmass they settled on destroyed all they had brought with them. In any case, after these disasters, they would retain what knowledge they had, but all their technological equipment would be gone, and they had no way to return to the ship that brought them here. History as we know it began after these events. We do not know who brought the moon here, but it is here now, and it is a constant reminder of the unusual characteristics it embodies. The dark side of the moon is always hidden to our eyes and telescopes on Earth, an obviously perfect vantage point for aliens to construct secret hidden spaceports. The lack of atmosphere is no problem to enclosed domes with artificial environments, which even NASA admits our scientists already have the technology. What they won't admit publicly is the existence of structures on the moon and the lunar extraterrestrial activity. One of the most compelling witness accounts of structures on the moon came from a man who worked for the Director of Intelligence at Langley in Virginia. Carl Wolf was one of only two technicians at Langley with high enough security clearance to work with a high-tech photographic equipment which processed info from U-2 spy planes and other military intelligence hardware. At the time, Langley was the center for receiving information from the Lunar Orbiter Project, a satellite sent to the moon specifically for reconnaissance and to take images of the far side of the moon. This was for the military, who knew at the time there were structures on the moon. Wolf surfaced 30 years later to reveal he was sent to repair NSA photographic equipment that failed. While there, he engaged in conversation with an attendant in the dark room. About 30 minutes into the process, the attendant said to Wolf in a very distressed manner, by the way, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon. He then proceeded to put down photographs in front of Wolf, which clearly displayed structures, mushroom-shaped buildings, spherical buildings, and towers. He could clearly make out geometric shapes, well-organized and well-designed. Most notable to Wolf were what looked exactly like radar antennas, very similar to what one would find on Earth. There was no doubt now in Wolf's mind why the diverse array of scientists and investigators were in attendance on that day. They had arrived to see and study what he was looking at, structures made by intelligent beings on the moon. Over the ensuing days, Wolf was certain that the news of the moon structures would be announced to the world, but it never happened. Wolf was now certain that he had to remain silent or his life would be in danger. The year that Wolf saw the remarkable structures on the dark side of the moon was 1965, four years before Neil Armstrong put the first footprint on the lunar surface. Former CIA pilot John Lear in an interview stated that 250 million humanoid aliens live on the moon. 
He also stated that beneath the surface of the moon are urban areas where gray aliens live. There are laboratories in the underground facilities where genetic experiments are carried out. NASA published photographs taken by Apollo 8, 10, and 11 to prevent certain secrets of the moon from being revealed. These photographs were in 1971 in the NASA book SB2-46. Despite the editing of the images, it is still possible to see a city, a space base, pipes, roads, vegetation, air, and atmosphere. According to Lear, all we know about the moon is a sham government with the specific purpose of hiding its extraterrestrial activities and programs. I cannot prove it, Lear stated, or I would already be dead. It was during the 1950s that many UFOs seen over Earth were tracked back to the moon by government tracking stations in secret complexes in the deserts of Arizona and Nevada inside underground mountain bases. During this time, officials obtained a photo of a saucer-shaped craft hovering over the moon, taken by a civilian astronomer, Sergeant Willard Winnall who investigated UFO landings in Ohio while in Army intelligence, described the 8x10 detailed photo of a silvery spaceship hovering directly over a huge moon landscape estimated to be several miles long. Soviet and American spacecraft in orbit over the moon began to photograph mysterious structures on the moon, which were censored by NASA, but soon obtained by scientific researchers like Fred Streckling, who demanded the evidence from this so-called civilian agency. NASA eventually released the photos without comment. Many of the structures can only be seen when these photos are blown up to a much larger size. The United States spacecraft Ranger 2 took over 200 photographs of the moon's craters with domes inside. They were reported in the news media by French astronomers about 48 years earlier. 33 moon dome photos from Lunar Orbiter 2 were released without comment in Washington, D.C. in 1967. On June the 1st of 1966, NASA had admitted to the news media that astronauts had seen UFOs, then later contradicted the shocking statement by denying it. During the Apollo 11 landing, hundreds of independent civilian radio operators with powerful VHF equipment separately reported hearing startling observations from the Apollo moonwalkers, such as breach has either flowed into these structures before they were built or the domes are younger than the floor. The area is oval or elliptical. So what were these domes and structures that the astronauts observed? Apollo radio public broadcasts from the moon also used the terms and phrases flashes of light, buildings, roads, tracks, and huge blocks. When news reporters asked space program officials what these terms were all about, they were told that they were metaphors for geological formations. However, scientist Forkel Bez, who taught geology to the astronauts, admitted that he was totally baffled by these terms. Bez admitted the clincher when he said, not every discovery has been announced. When news reporters asked him about the flashes of light, Bez replied, there is no question about it, not natural. The Apollo encounter was common knowledge in NASA but nobody has talked about it until now. He continued with, all Apollo and Gemini flights were followed, both at a distance and sometimes also quite close by space vehicles of extraterrestrial origin. Every time it occurred, the astronauts informed mission control who then ordered absolute silence. Shatlin also stated, I think that Walter Shira aboard Mercury 8 was the first of the astronauts to use the code name Santa Claus to indicate the presence of flying saucers next to space capsules. 
However, his announcements were rarely noticed by the general public. It was different when James Lovell on board the Apollo 8 command module came out from behind the moon and said for everybody to hear, please be informed that there is a Santa Claus. Even though this happened on Christmas Day of 1968, many people sensed a hidden meaning to those words. The rumors persist to this day. NASA may well be a civilian agency, but many of its programs are funded by the defense budget and most of the astronauts are subject to military security regulations, apart from the fact that the NSA screens all films and radio communications as well. The astronauts were under strict orders not to discuss their sightings. According to John Podesta, former chief of staff for Bill Clinton and counselor to Barack Obama, the truth about the moon is being kept hidden from the public. He stated, I'm skeptical about many things, including the notion that government always knows best and that the people can't be trusted with the truth. The time to pull the curtain back on the alien presence on the moon subject is long overdue. We have statements from the most credible sources, those in a position to know about a fascinating phenomenon, the nature of which is yet to be determined. Dr. John Brandenburg is the principal inventor of the microwave electrothermal plasma thruster, which uses water propellant for space propulsion. Brandenburg was involved in the Clementine mission to the moon, which was part of a joint space project between the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization and NASA. The mission discovered water at the moon's poles in 1994. He was the deputy manager of that mission. Brandenburg stated, the Clementine project was a photo reconnaissance mission basically to check out if someone was building bases on the moon that we didn't know about. Were they expanding them? It was during the Clementine mapping of the lunar surface that Brandenburg began to suspect an extraterrestrial presence on the moon. He said, as somebody in the space defense community, I look on any such structure on the moon with great concern because it isn't ours and there's no way we could have built such a thing. It means someone else is up there. Brandenburg is also quoted for saying, we were aware there was a possibility of an unknown presence, possibly alien extraterrestrial near the earth. There I am sitting in a room of retired army and air force generals and a few admirals and we're watching what looks like a firefight in space. The most senior general there turned to me and said, where do you think they're from? And I said, I don't know, sir. I've heard they're from 40 light years from here. Intelligent beings from other star systems have been and are visiting our planet Earth. They are variously referred to as visitors, others, star people, ETs, etc. They are visiting Earth now. This is not a matter of conjecture or wistful thinking. Is it possible that every time we look up at the moon, we are peering into our own past? We are seeing the vessel that transversed the vast emptiness of space and brought all mankind to Earth. Is the moon a spaceship? Could aliens reside in it now? Or is it an ancient starship with secrets of our past and even we humans ourselves? Or could it be an observation platform scrutinizing human endeavors as we grow and become a spacefaring race as well?
Until we begin to take these curiosities about the moon seriously, we may never know who parked a starship in orbit around Earth. The next time you look up at the moon, ask yourself, why? Thank <laughs> you.